So today we're working on distributed laws and as you can see here I'm giving you a table and your job is to fill it in. So pause the video because this is a quiz. What I want you to do is to fill this table in, fill in the truth values of all these statements. Now you might have to break down these uh, these statements into into more primary primary components just so you can fill out the entire table. But yeah, pause the video because I'm going to do the same and I'm going to fill out this table with all the answers. So welcome back. So did you guys get the same answers? If you did, good job. If you didn't, you must have messed up somewhere so you could go back and do it again. So you might see that there are some patterns with the, with the values that we got. Now these two statements are logically equivalent. Why? Because, well, the pattern is the same. They have five zeros going down the row or going down the column and then they end with three ones. Same thing with these two statements. These two are also logically equivalent. They start off with three zeros in the first three rows and then in the, in the last five rows they all end up with ones. So these are logically equivalent and this is what we call the distributed law. So this statement is pretty much or it is logically equivalent to this statement and this statement is logically equivalent to this statement. So now we got that done. We can see that for all the primitive statements P, Q, and R, we found that this is logically equivalent to that. So pretty much this P and Q or R pretty much makes this when you expand it out. So that's what we found out. And that is called the distributive law of AND over OR. The second one was the second statement that we looked at because there were two statements that we find, or four statements. Two of them formed a set so that they were logically equivalent to each other. And this was the second one that we found. This is the distributive law of OR over AND. Now I'm, I'm, I'm totally going to stop calling these conjunctions and disjunctions because they're really formal words and I like saying and or or because they're more simple to me. Yeah, I'm a simpleton. Got a problem with it? Now, these two laws are similar to, uh, to pretty much what we do in simple math. So they're similar to such things as A times B plus C. Now, I'm pretty sure that you guys have, know how to expand this this uh, this formula out. All you do is you take a times and you just expand it out. So you get a times b plus a times c. So that's the kind of idea that we want to go through with the distributive law. Because you can see here that if we imagine p to be a and you imagine this n to be times this q to be b plus c then we're pretty much just expanding this out. And it's the same idea for for distributed law of or over and as well. So, and here's a simple hint, or well, it's not, not, it's not really related, but it's kind of related. But when S1 is logically equivalent to S2, the compound statement S1 is bicompetitional to S2 is a tautology. So that means that this statement, this statement that we have here, oh, what the hell happened? So this statement that we have here, uh, all the truth values in that statement are all ones. And the same goes for the negated S1 is logically equivalent to negated S2. The compound statement negated S1 is biconditional to negated S2. And that is also a tautology, meaning that their truth value components are all ones. Now, this logically equivalent a symbol with a slash to it means that the two statements are not logically equivalent. And that is just something that you have to remember and it's pretty simple to remember because well if we have the the, the, the arrow without the slash then that means that it's logically equivalent. With the slash it means it's not logically equivalent. And what we have next is the laws of logic and this is something that we really have to remember because it's really important and if you don't remember it then you're probably gonna fail your whole course. So remember it, for any primitive P, Q, R, any tautology, T, O, and any contradiction, F, O, follow these laws of logic. So if we have, uh, 
two negated symbols and a p, then that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much logical equivalent to p, and that is called the law of double negation. And something happens, so I'm gonna end the video here because I have lots more laws. We're gonna come back to the law of laws of logic in the next video. But please rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.